this video, I'm going to show you how we can set up Remedy or Remedy, if you will, in Logic Pro and how we can use some of its features and navigate around it as a plugin and tool to help you make some super interesting melodies and developed sounds using this tool. So here we are in Logic Pro. It's just a completely blank project. So we're gonna start from scratch here. Now the first thing I'm gonna to want to do is add a MIDI instrument of some kind. Because Remedy is a MIDI sampling tool, it doesn't generate any audio in itself. We need something to generate it. And there's a specific way that these types of plugins work in Logic. So let's just add a default tool from Logic Pro. So we can go up here to the little plus icon and if we go over to software instrument we have alchemy which is the, one of the best synths available to you in logic we'll just open that up now we have alchemy loaded and if we press on our keyboard we're able to play that now we want to add a remedy to this channel if we look at the channel itself and we can see this just by pressing i we have a midi effects channel just here above alchemy if we click on this, scroll down to our audio unit, here we have Songwish and Remedy 2. When we load this up, this is what we're presented with. Let's just go over our GUI really quickly. On the left hand side here, we have a file browser. You can use the up arrow here to go to the main folder. This is our factory MIDI presets. We can double click on any of the folders to have a look inside at all the MIDI arrangements available within. If you've got your own MIDI that you want to bring in and use inside Remedy, we can and click on here and navigate to our own folders. Over on the right hand side across the top we've got our main preset settings. Now there are no presets by default we will work from the MIDI files but once we've created something that we like we can save these and reload. Below are a series of pads. These pads are where we're going to assign our sampled MIDI section and we'll go over how those work in just a moment. Below here is a nice view that will show us the MIDI data that is assigned to each of those pads, much like we would experience in a piano roll in a door like Logic. Then below we've got some options for the slice of MIDI we're looking at and filter. Filter is not what we expect, this allows us to filter out part of the MIDI channels and we'll look at that in just a moment in practice. So let's load ourselves up a MIDI pattern. It's going to say classical. We can grab this from Bach here and a double click will load it onto the highlighted pad for us. We can see now if we press play in our DAW, nothing happens. Currently, Remedy isn't following along to our track. It's got no signal to play or interact. However, if we press a key on our keyboards, different slices of the MIDI track are assigned to those keys. This means we can use a MIDI keyboard to browse through samples of the MIDI that we may wish to use. I'm going to bring the BPM of this track down to 88 and we can hear it's now going to conform. In our slice options towards the bottom here we can slow the MIDI down further by reducing the tempo. 0.5 will reduce it in half. Now we've got something a little more that we could perhaps use. Now I like this particular slice we have just here. To assign this slice to this pad, I would click the little tick button on this particular pad here. This is now assigned to this particular pad. If we want to assign this MIDI pattern across all of the pads, we can very simply press two pads. And now different slices have been assigned across all of these pads. The note that triggers each pad is highlighted just here in the bottom left hand corner of each. Let's have a look in Logic's piano roll at how we might trigger those. As so we can see it's C minus two and C sharp minus two. However, the minus standards don't correspond across all DAWs. Programming a simple melody here that triggers different parts or different slices. Now, if we want to change the slice on a particular pad, the way that we would do that is to click on the pad. Look, if we highlight it, we can see that 
it triggers that pad, but it goes back to the one we've currently got highlighted. Here we just use the little wrench icon at the top. When we select that, we're now working on that pad. You can think of it as the wrench icon as being it's currently active and being worked on. Now when we use our keyboard, we can trigger those different slices. If you wanted to assign that slice to that particular pad or key, press the tick and that will now be assigned. Now at the moment we're in edit mode and you can exit edit mode just by clicking on the wrench icon. You can see the difference here, the little icon just in the part that we had selected has changed from that tick to the star. And this would be what we'd want to do if we say wanted to work with different MIDI sections on each pad and we wanted to combine different parts and ideas together. But in this case, we're able to just keep working in the edit mode for this particular project. And in Alchemy, we're gonna find a more appropriate sound than the default. We can use our piano roll now to listen to different parts of the sound and build up a melody. But perhaps there are certain things we want to change. This is quite a low down melody in itself. I'd maybe like the sound to be transposed up. So from here, we can use the transpose plus 12 option and it's gonna move all the MIDI up one octave for us. If we wanted to work in smaller or larger sections, we can also change the size, although four as a default does tend to work quite nicely. Even though this particular track is written in three, four as well, as you can see, it takes a four bar section for us in each instance. We can now use our piano roll to go through different sections and find progressions we might like to use. Now with this particular slice here, perhaps I don't want to use all of the top melody and I do just want to have the bottom side of things. If we go to the filter, we can take out different parts of the melody. They correspond right through to one to 16 from top to bottom. So one would take away the top. You can take some time to find different ideas, but if you're not finding that you are inspired, you can very easily change out what you were already doing. And we can just take a new set of MIDI, double click, send to pads, and we're already going with something else. A 
top tip from me is if you're looking to do melodies for beats and things like that, just have a drum loop in the background, something that's inspired you and maybe fits roughly with the tempo that you're working in. Remember, you can also freely change out the sounds while you demo what you're currently using. We can also take the opportunity to layer up the sounds. So in Logic here, we can highlight the one now called Music Box. Press Command and D. That's going to make a duplication of that particular track. Now, we can take this down and we can now change our sound out in Alchemy to let's add a bass sound in, some kind of sub. And this will give us a bass line. So now we want to use the top melody as an alternative. In this case, I think we're going to stick with what we had. And let's bring it back down to the original octave. of how to work with a remedy inside Logic Pro. Hopefully it's given you all the tools that you can use to then work on and experiment with making melodies for yourself. Look forward to seeing you in future videos.